Today's video, I wanna do a breakdown of my Red Komodo rig. This is something that I've put together over the last year and have primarily been using this configuration for a lot of run and gun and documentary style shooting. My favorite part about this rig and really the reason why I wanna share it with you is because I think I have some pretty good solutions for being able to run multiple XLR microphones into the OG Komodo and actually have decent passable audio for documentary stuff. Obviously, it's always better to have a sound person on set, but there are just a lot of situations where that isn't possible, especially in the documentary space that I work in. And so I've found some pretty good solutions that I've been pretty happy with. And I've learned a lot from other people sharing their rig breakdowns over the years and thought it would be fun to share mine. This will be a pretty chill video. I'm gonna strip the camera down and then kind of put it back together and talk about a lot of the key components. And as always, I'll make sure to leave links to everything in the descriptions below. All right, let's get into it. If you're new around here, my name's Riley and I'm a filmmaker who's produced documentaries on multiple continents around the world using the gear that I talk about on this channel. So if you're someone who's into making documentaries or films with small crews, then you're in the right place. Consider subscribing and following along. All right, back to the video. All right, so I've got the camera broken down here and I'll build it back up and kind of share what each of the pieces are and why I think it works for me in a run and gun type of environment. I'm in the middle of two documentary shoots right now and this is the exact configuration that I have been working with. One is sort of a verite style documentary about a musician and the other is kind of a branded content style micro doc with a local painter that you've probably seen a lot on this channel. Her name's Sarah Damas and I'll leave links to uh, those projects in the description once they've come out. The first thing that I'll touch on is kind of what's on the camera right now as it is. So I've got this uh, GDU Timmy rib uh, and this just allows me to mount some extra stuff on it. Right now I just have a cold shoe, I think from small rig on it. And then the bottom is this sort of bottom cheese plate from GDU. Um, and this allows me to get an additional tripod plate on it and then be able to spread out two screws for the tripod plate. And then as well, um, just some attach some sprigs and some like cable management type stuff here uh, on the bottom. So really like these things from GDU. They're pretty low profile uh, and they add a little bit of weight in a good way uh, to this rig. Next, I'll go ahead and talk about the side handle and the top handle that I've got on here. So I'm just using the red outrigger handle. Um, there's not a ton to say about this. It is pretty pricey for what it is, but it's got start and stop, which I think is pretty vital for dock shooting. And, and it is adjustable. You can kind of slide this into different configurations. And again, for dock shooting, that's really helpful to be able to get it into different configurations. And you don't need like an extra cable for, you know, running start and stop off of it. So next I'm gonna go ahead and attach the top plate and top handle that I've been working with. This is from a company called Mid49. I'm pretty sure they used to be the original owners of Wooden Camera and they just make some awesome stuff. One nice little thing about this top handle is uh, that it obviously fits right onto the outrigger handle, but uh, the screws, uh, they don't fall out. So if you can go ahead and like shake it like a dummy, but you're not gonna lose the screws on this, which I appreciate. Now what's nice about this top handle is that it will slide onto the front here and then you can use just this little, this little pin here to lock it into place. But then this top handle can slide back and forth on this rig here. And I think this is really nice because it frees up the top screen that I use to get to settings and, and the menu. And so when I'm shooting with it, it can be slid back and locked into place and is a good comfortable top handle. And then when I need to access the menu, I can slide the top handle forward, get to everything, and lock it in place if I want. And the uh, top handle can go into multiple configurations. So you could slide it around like this if you want to. 
Uh, for me, I have it configured in this way because I have this wooden camera safety NATO rail bolted to the front of this top handle with the M4 screws that are in here. And the reason I've done this is because I like the NATO rail with the safety pins for attaching my monitor. And so I'll get into this uh, in a little bit, but that's what this crossbar piece is. It's just a NATO rail for that. All right, next we've got the battery and the power solution here. I'm using the Core SWX uh, adapter plate for adding a V-mount battery onto the back of the Komodo. And this guy is decently low profile. It's pretty reliable with a USB-C port on this side and a DTAP port on this side. But what I think makes this really nice is that it's gonna pass information to the camera. So you're gonna get a percentage remaining on the V-mount battery and you don't have to rely on like the, the dots on the side here to just guess, you know, how many, uh, how much time you have remaining here. And I'm using these uh, Core Neo Mini uh, 98 watt hour mini V-mount batteries. And I like these because they're nice and compact. Uh, they are safe to fly with. But the big thing is when you push the side button here, it's gonna light up and give you a time remaining and a percentage indicator. So what's nice about this is it's going to kind of calculate based on the power draw that you are giving the camera based on, you know, the frame rate and the resolution that your camera's in, the uh, backlight of the top LCD, the SDI feed that you're feeding it, if you have multiple DTAP accessories, all those things, uh, the battery is gonna calculate based on the power draw, how much time you have left on the battery, and it's pretty accurate. And so in run and gun situations, uh, that is super helpful to have like a down to the minute uh, indicator of how much power you have left. All right, next let's talk about audio. And I think this is really the reason why I have fallen in love uh, with this configuration in the first place. And most of it is gonna come down to mid 49 and a couple of microphone selections. So right now I am using this side plate. It's a right side plate from mid 49. And I have their audio uh, breakout cable with it. And what I think is really nice about this is that for the OG Red Komodo, it is utilizing uh, the stereo mic input and having a cable like this uh, run with an XLR adapter could just have like a ton of excess cable, but it has this sort of track that is built underneath uh, the XLR adapter and that can hide the excess cable. So that's really nice. And then also you get two full size XLR inputs that I think is super helpful. And then you just have a ton of other uh, quarter 20 and M4 mounting points. Uh, there's even a rosette attachment. So if you wanna attach a side handle that's different than the outrigger handle, you can do that. So this uh, side plate from mid 49, I think is the best, most versatile side plate that I've been able to find uh, just because of the integration with this XLR breakout box. And the other thing that I think is really nice uh, that has been a huge game changer for me is the fact that not only are there all of these like additional mounting points on the side of this plate, but on the top of the plate, as we'll see in a second, there is a quarter 20 and M4 uh, mounting points on the top of this plate. And so we can get some additional mounting points on the top of the camera, which I'll show you here in a second how that's configured and why that's so nice. So once I have this mid 49 side plate attached to it, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take the uh, stereo cable and just run it underneath the V mount battery. And then I can plug it into uh, this stereo microphone jack here on the side. And now this cable is like tucked really cleanly out of the way. And I've got 
XLR audio going into the camera. And when I'm packing this up and I'm not using uh, the you know audio from the camera, then I don't typically like to leave uh, this mic jack plugged in here. And so what I've done is just add this little uh, sprig cable management thing uh, on the side of this mid 49 plate. And so I can just tuck this in like that. And so now it's nice and clean, it's out of the way. And when I'm not using audio or uh, I've just got this camera stored and I don't want the camera having the mic jack plugged in, I don't want it to get damaged, I can tuck it out of the way. Now, I think that the star of this rig is actually this little guy from GDU and it's this like right angle bracket. It's this uh, tiny little piece here. But what I've done is I have taken one of these M4 screws and I've actually just bolted it here to the top of this rig on this uh, mid 49 side plate. And it's given me just this little right angle bracket that I can put uh, a wooden camera cold shoe on it. It really can be any brand of cold shoe, but this is gonna allow me to attach my shotgun mic to the rig. And it's also going to get the microphone up and out of the way. Right now, the uh, red outrigger handle is uh, just a little too tall to be able to add uh, my shotgun mic directly to this side plate. Uh, if I were to put the cold shoe on the side plate, um, this isn't gonna fit. And so this little right angle plate is gonna just raise it up and get it off to the side just far enough uh, to be able to comfortably shoot with that and have good clean audio. Now in a perfect world, this little right angle bracket would have two uh, screws in it so that it doesn't come loose, but it actually, I've not been able to uh, get it to come loose um, just because I can crank it down uh, pretty tight. I think the metal on metal just kind of connection locks it into place. And so once I have this side plate on it, uh, I'm able to comfortably get my thumb into a position where I can use uh, this run stop um, and it's not in the way of the XLR ports and I can kind of set it up as I need with my microphone, which right now I'm using the MKE 400 from Sennheiser. So what I really like about this microphone from Sennheiser is that it has a battery built into it and you can actually give it more gain. And so this uh, little tiny, you know, mini shotgun mic is able to give like an extra 10 or 20 db of gain and the preamps on this thing are pretty clean and so i don't have to push the gain on my red komodo super high to be able to get a usable signal that is relatively clean for just onboard uh, audio on my red komodo and this just slides into uh, this cold shoe adapter right here and I can lock that down in place. And then again, I've got a comfortable um, setup to be able to hold and my hand isn't in the way from the shotgun mic and it's given me good clean audio into the OG Komodo. Sticking with Sennheiser, the other microphone that I'm gonna go ahead and attach is a wireless lav. These are obviously clutch for any documentary shoot and I'm using the Sennheiser G3 packs. I think they might be up to like the G4 now, but I bought this like eight, nine years ago and it's still going strong. And I'm just gonna attach that to the side of the camera on this other cold shoe. And then both of these uh, microphones that have XLR run into the mid 49 uh, adapter back here and I'll do all the cabling at the end of the video. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the rods. This is nothing super special. Uh, it's just a rod system from wooden camera that I had lying around. Uh, I think it is their uh, unified DSLR system. So this is from an old DSLR rig back in the day, but what I really like about it is that I have enough mounting points to um, add uh, like a Manfrotto tripod style uh, base plate to the bottom here. And then it has like a Manfrotto style receiver 
on the top here. If I can't find a link to this specific one, I know that there is a small rig equivalent that I can link to in the description, uh, but it can just take the rods, which is another spot that I can add microphones or follow focus or different stuff that I need uh, down the line, but I can take the tripod plate that I've got on the camera itself, which I could just add, you know, and slot that into, um, you know, and have it directly, you know, tripod right onto the camera. Uh, but if I need the rod system, I've got this ready to go and it is pretty handy. It'll just slide in and have kind of one universal base plate with the Manfrotto style system uh, that I can, you know, go with and have it more modular and kind of build it up or strip it down depending on the needs of the shoot. All right, next I'm gonna talk about the lensing I've got going on here. So this is the newest addition to the kit, and this is the Mikey Variable ND, and it's their like pro cine kit. And so what I really like about this is it is a rear lens variable ND filter. And so a lot like the Canon system and the breakthrough filter system, it has uh, this little, circular ND filter that just slides in right behind the camera. It also comes with a clear filter, which is really nice. So you don't have to buy an extra clear filter, but it's got this uh, little dial on the side and you can see it will uh, spin here and just provide kind of a variable ND system, which is really nice. And it's like a one, one and a half stop to like a nine stop uh, system. And so uh, here in Seattle where there is not a ton of sun, this is definitely more than enough. And then uh, from what I can see on the initial testings I've done, the color cast on it is pretty minimal, which is nice. And then it's got a locking um, EF mount to the front. And so I have, either all EF glass for my Komodo or I've adapted lenses to EF. I think it's sort of like a neutral lens mount that I can use between my red Komodo and the Sony's that I'm shooting this video on. Uh, and it just provides a more solid connection and means that I have a little more flexibility on what filters can go in front of the lens. All right, with the ND system attached to the front of the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and add a lens. Right now, this is the contact Zeiss 25 millimeter f2.8. I've been really liking these contact Zeiss lenses and I'll have some dedicated reviews coming in the future about them, but yeah, just great vintage lenses. Um, nice and sharp, lots of character. Uh, been really enjoying these and I've got them adapted to EF. And so this just gets added in similar to like a PL lens where um, you fit that in and can lock that in nice and snug. It's just gonna allow there to be less play between the lens and the adapter, just having uh, this kind of locking mechanism on here. And then again, uh, I've got access to uh, this ND filter that I can kind of scroll through and keep a constant aperture when I'm shooting, which I really appreciate and just love the flexibility that that allows me. And so uh, next we'll go ahead and attach the uh, mat box to the front of this guy. This is just the small rig. I think it's the like mini mat box. Uh, it's super lightweight. Uh, I mostly use it for the flag and front to be able to control filters for these vintage lenses, but then it also gives me the ability to add like a diffusion filter um, or additional ND if I need it. And then last but not least, I'll go ahead and attach the monitor. Uh, this is nothing special. It's just the Atomos Ninja 5. I had this uh, in my kit with my Sony a7S III and uh, it's a nice five inch HD monitor. I've got the Atomos uh, SDI uh, module on here. And so I'm able to use that and uh, get an SDI feed uh, to the Red Komodo. The only thing I don't like about this monitor is how power hungry it is because it is a monitor and a recorder. It's like double the power draw of the Shinobi 7, which is like 
an extra two inches and is twice as bright. And then I've just got this small rig um, NATO monitor hinge here, uh, and I can attach it to the wooden camera uh, NATO rail that I talked about earlier. And that just slides in like that. And so that is pretty much the uh, rig build here. I'll go ahead and attach the cables, but I think this is like a really complete setup. I can have two XLR audio inputs onto uh, the onboard audio for the Red Komodo. I can obviously get uh, a decent uh, image that I can monitor and it's nice and compact because it's five inches and really I can kind of shoot in this for a long period of time. It's really comfortable. The top handle obviously allows me to like have an easy rig to it um, if I'm using that, but I've got access to uh, the ND filter right here. Um, I can pull focus, got microphones, uh, decent good quality sound. And because I've got this little NATO rail thing, I can slide the monitor over to the side and then the monitor is not being blocked by, or the shotgun mic is not being blocked by the monitor. So I'll go ahead and attach the cables and we'll get it built out uh, in its final form. All right, so this is the rig here in its final form uh, with all of the cables attached to it and the cable management. There isn't really a whole lot of you know excitement going on here aside from the fact that I'm able to just keep the cables nice and organized because all of them are these like coiled uh, different cables. And then I have these little sprigs attached to the bottoms of the GDU base plate to keep it kind of nice and organized and out of the way. And on this side, you can see the same thing. Uh, I've got the sprig down here at the bottom. And then, yeah, the really cool thing, like I've talked about before, having two full-sized XLRs uh, into the camera and to be able to record decent audio on the Red Komodo is really helpful. So definitely for like the run and gun shoots that I've been working on, I'm able to record my own sound. So thanks for nerding out with me. I hope this is helpful for you. I think it's always helpful for me to see how other people kind of in a similar genre with a similar camera system have been able to rig out their cameras. And for me, I think this provides a few workarounds for some of the shortcomings uh, that the OG Komodo has. And yeah, I've been really happy with it on these last couple of dock shoots. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one.